rules of five, please. All comments come, questions come through the chair, and I will get people to, wish to ask questions so forth. In due time to do so, I'll just ask that people not to be what someone else has just said. And uh, so that will proceed with the uh, delegate leaving the House Bill 1458. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, every now and again, Mr. Chairman, a great plan comes together. And this is an example of that. I want to give you a little history about this bill, and then uh, I'd like to share with you how it works. You, yes, sir. One thing first that I'll just announce, um, I apologize for you to interrupt me, but uh, no, Fallon has asked for HB 1466 go by for the day. That bill will not be heard by anyone here that's interested in hearing 1466. Doug Fallon will not be heard. Okay, Mr. Chairman, let's give a little background. Last year, there was an effort uh, by a couple of patrons, uh, one patron in the Senate, to basically make the $10 fee of the concealed carry permit that is apportioned to the clerks of court option, local option. In other words, the folks could charge it or not. Um, what that led to, and that bill did not pass, that went to appropriations and it did not pass. But what, what transpired out of that were a number of interest groups came to me to talk to me about their desire on how to, to basically relook this whole fee operation. So let me take you from the top. Right now, the total fee possible for a concealed carry permit in the Commonwealth of Virginia is $50. Five of that 50 is state police mandatory so that they can run the background check, the FBI background check, on a potential applicant or an applicant for a concealed handgun permit in Virginia. <coughs> That's immutable. That cannot go away. We've got to do that. Law enforcement wants to make sure that continues to happen. They have a vested interest in making sure that the FBI has looked at every applicant. So we're in agreement on that. This bill does not touch that $5. Okay, that's number one. So you have $45 left over. 35 of that 45 goes to our local law enforcement agency, the sheriffs. The sheriffs have come to me and said, look, we're happy to just get rid of the $35 piece if we can increase from ten to twenty dollars the courtroom fee assessed to convicted people that go through the court system to be used for courtroom security because that is a huge challenge <clears throat> to ensure that there's a requisite security in the courtrooms and they feel that that is a better investment a better um, source of, of capital for what affects them than the $35 for the concealed carry. So they asked me to just eliminate it. So in this bill, $5 stays for the state police and $35 are gone, mandatory, gone. So no longer can the sheriffs charge the $35 because they're going to get now a courtroom fee that was $10 is now going to be 20 so it's going to double. So the clerk approach was slightly different because in the Senator Chase bill of last year, it was optional. You know, it was a local option where a locality could say, yes, we want to continue to charge the $10, or no, we don't want to charge the $10. And so under the bill that's before you, the maximum amount that you would pay now for a concealed carry permit in Virginia would be $15. And the smallest that you could pay would be $5 if a locality elected to just opt out of the $10. Well, lo and behold, little Scotty Langfeld was walking around the General Assembly building 30 minutes ago. And Mr. Chairman, you do not know this. The representatives from the clerk Mr. Ash, came to me and said, look, um, we have, we're a little bumpy on the local option thing, but if you just flat eliminate the clerk $10 completely, we won't oppose it. 
So what I'm suggesting to you is an amendment that kills the $35, kills the $10, and we're stuck with the $5, and plus the plus up from 10 to 20 for the court. And so we're kind of in amendment stage here now. Okay, so how I would ask Mr. Chairman, deferring to counsel, if you would, how we would fashion that as an amendment to this subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, we, we could strike the language um, that's on lines 14 through 15. The language currently reads, the clerk shall charge a fee of $10 for the processing of an application or issuing of a permit, including his costs associated with the consultation with law enforcement agencies. The section would, we would then need to move um, some of the existing language down into this next section related to state police. Uh, because we're, it would say costs associated with processing the application, we would need to clarify uh, the application. Um, but that would be a fairly simple amendment to strike the first sentence of A, um, and then we could, then that that subsection A would, be, would begin with the state police may charge a fee not to exceed five dollars to cover its costs associated with processing the concealed handgun permit application we would need to add the language of the concealed permit concealed handgun permit we would also then need to strike where it says the application um, the total amount assessed for processing an application for a permit shall not exceed fifty dollars uh, as the bill's written, we've stricken that and said not to exceed $15 uh, because we're striking the $35 fee. We would then um, instead need to strike 50 and say shall not exceed $5 because the only existing fee would be the state fee. So, Mr. Chairman, here's what I mean. And if you elected to accept that amendment, and I would suggest an amendment to make it a to the state, the very thing that I hate to do. Um, but if you were to suggest that, here's what the net effect would be. We will eliminate the $10 clerk fee. We will eliminate the Sheriff $35 fee. We will retain the state police $5 fee for the back FBI background check. And we will increase the court fee, the court fee on convicted criminals from $10 to $20. And that's your bill. I so moved. Okay. I, I, I moved the amendment. Okay. Move the amendment in the nature of substitute. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. All right. The amendment in the nature of substitute will be drafted. I was assumed to be presented uh, in the meeting tomorrow. The, the contents of the day would be, would be actually remembered to be in the report tomorrow. Uh, so, voting on the amendment, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. The nature of the substitute will be uh, provided. Uh, now, the next thing we have to do is. Okay. Mr. Chairman, work. Does, work, does, 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 does this uh, does this bill say whether the sheriff's department fee for the courts gets moved from ten to twenty? Yes. I don't see that. If that's in D on the second page. Okay. Line okay. seventy-one. Yep. I see it now. Yep. Okay. Good enough. Chairman, I know the Sheriff's Association is here, the clerks are represented here, the state police are represented here. I think I've asked any questions, anybody may have any comments, and hearing none um, of the committee. Is there any questions from the committee? Um, what is it? It says that there's a fiscal impact. Is that just pure? That's what that's really positive. How they do it? It's, a, it's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I had one person who wanted yes, to speak. I'm, yes, Carol Nago with the League of Women Voters, and I'm, this actually occurred to me this afternoon. If you're going to change what the sheriff's fee is or eliminate it, could there be some of it retained for other security measures? That would be, that would be a little fun with that. Well, you've moved it to security at the courthouse, so uh, that was one. That's because that, that would still be an old deal with Okay, well, then we'll work on that another time. All right. Uh, Ready to vote? I mean, the report is everyone that heard from me. Yeah, you know, who's in favor and who's not. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I've asked for questions and comments. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, is there anybody here from the use of the club?
clerks were okay with removing that piece. Um, Chip Dix represented the clerks and we had concerns about the discretionary nature of the fee with the way the bill was originally drafted. It, by the way, it didn't allow the Board of Supervisors to make that decision. The locality would make the decision. The clerk 